All right, so as usual, the Zappagap 2 component resin glue. It is perfect for uh, gluing PLA and if you wanted to get it like super, super strong and durable. And as you can see here, this is why I really like the Zappa Gap C epoxy. It is a perfect gap filler as it says in the name. But you can see here that there's quite a big, a large gap. And uh, you can just fill it up with this stuff. It will expand a little bit, but uh, eventually uh, you're not going to see anything of the mold line. And here I'm working with Sculpt Mold. My printer had some issues uh, during the print. But these were such a long prints of 40 to 50 hours per piece and all the gaps that the printer left open I decided to fill it up and uh, fix them with a sculpt mold and as you can see here the sculpt mold is perfect to, uh, to mold so uh, you can just uh, yeah, follow the veins and recreate them. And I do mix in uh, some PVA glue in the sculpt mold so it uh, attaches itself more to the PLA. Then we are going over to priming and I will having the dark parts primed Chaos Black from Citadel. And then we are going over to some Chaotic Red from the Army Painter combined with some brown leather from the Army Painter. Highlighting some spots with some necrotic flesh, it's a little bit of a green-ish color. And even highlighting it more with some more brown leather and skeleton bone of Army Painter spray paints.
So as you can see with the painting, we are not really dry brushing. We are using the effects of dry brushing, but do it with wet paint, so it all blends in more together. And you can go back and forth as much as you want and as you like. And just keep on going until you are receiving the right color scheme, the right connections that you want. And don't be afraid to use many, many colors. It is going to end up to be a natural looking object. So, uh, yeah, more colors, more natural, and that's uh, always good. So I bought this model of uh, CG Trader. Um, so unfortunately I cannot share it with you because it's not a royalty free uh, model, but you can find it there. It is, of course, scaled up quite a lot. In total, the statue of Groot is reaching 230 centimeters. So it just barely uh, fits. Uh, it cannot fit in a door straight up. You have to uh, pivot it. So uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is quite a huge, huge Groot. So uh, as it should be. Eventually we have chopped it up into 12 pieces and we have printed it on the Chiron printer. I got some help from my uh, friend Yuri again. He has also printed some of the pieces on his printers just to speed up uh, time. Uh, infill 0%, single wall extrusion. Some of the pieces do have some infill but uh, yeah, it could not be uh, without. But most of them are, uh, are hollow. So it's quite light as well. In total there was like around 3 kilos of PLA in this project. So if you're up to it, uh, prepare for uh, using some of your PLA. And here we are going over to some airbrushing to just highlight some, uh, some areas and to downtone some of the flocking areas. So, after uh, this airbrushing and the flocking is done, the whole project is, uh, will be finished. This, in total it was over 550 hours of printing. It's uh, with a zero infill, so uh, it is completely hollow. Many pieces have been printed with a one millimeter nozzle to uh, just speed up the printing process. Um, painting and flocking, yeah, I do this in my uh, in my uh, in my spare time, but it took me around three weeks, and I have no idea, uh, I have no clue how much time I spent it in it, but uh, it was enough. But eventually, uh, we got a cool statue out of it of Groot, one of my favorite characters from the Marvel Universe anyway, so uh, quite happy with it. Hope you guys enjoyed it, um, maybe it will uh, get you into doing some of these things yourself. Any questions, any help, 
just write it in the comments or give me an email and we'll try to help you out as much as we can. Alright, see you in the next project. Bye bye.